Hello, hello again, everyone. Zach Attack is here with my TNA Impact Wrestling review for this Thursday evening, March the 20th, 2014. Of course, in Orlando. Back in Orlando for the last two weeks now. And then we'll, you know, then there's Impact. My thoughts on this Impact tonight was OK Impact. Little, I've been saying this about Impact's last couple months. Little, little more action. Little, little more talk and a lot less action tonight. So, OK situations. They have two titles defended. Plus, we had a reunion finally. The reunion was officially confirmed for the beautiful people following Angelina's return last week. Now, of course, we would have two title matches. We would have a tag team title match. A triple threat match, Fatal 3 way you want to call it, involving the American Wolves, Davy Richards and Eddie, Eddie Richards and Davy, I mean, Davy Richards and Eddie Edwards. I always get their last names mixed up. Taking on the Sonata, the Exhibition Champion, and Tigre Uno, who had a great non title win over the Tag Champs, four mans last week that made this match a three way. That match would also be accompanied with a title match that was made last week for the TNA Wood Head Rate Championship. Magnus was a Samoa Joe. Now, stipulation was that after uh, Eric Young got involved in Joe's match against Abyss last week, because of course Abyss and Eric Young's business ain't done yet, they were going to have Eric Young handcuffed to Abyss tonight as part of stipulation. Well, let's say Eric Young didn't get to make it to the match against Abyss. Did, didn't get to be handcuffed to Abyss, didn't make it to the match against Joe and Magnus. As we would begin Impact with a brawl involving these two in the back. ODB got a little bit involved, which is kind of a weird scenario. But both guys brawled outside the Impact Zone with weapons and all that. And got into the wing and got into a little of a brawl before Abyss would nail with the black hole slam. Taking out Eric Young out of the matchup and also building up the feud a little more. Now that we know another pay-per-view is coming up, a uh, sacrifice is coming up in April. They could have a match to sacrifice. But no matter what, Eric Young was taken out. Of the stipulation we handcuffed to Abyss thanks to that brawl to begin the impact. So MVP was looking for people to take Eric Young's place and he couldn't find anybody, so he decided to take the place of Eric Young. So we have MVP handcuffed to Abyss tonight as part of our main event. Before we get to our main event, we gotta get to the rest of the card for tonight's decent impact. Starting with a match speed of matches that were made last week. EC3 took on Bobby Lashley. Because Bobby Lashley returned to TNA at lockdown. Wanted to get, get it on with uh, EC3 following Kurt Angle's injury. Taking the place of Angle. Well, it's unofficial. Because uh, at the time, Bobby Lashley was unofficially a TNA contracted wrestler as of last week, storyline wise. But now he's officially contracted. That's why he made match with me last week. And Lashley would be the former WWE guy, you know, ECW, former ECW champion, former US champion. He's been a TNA for a couple of years, but no, he's all, like, he's all for Batista and all these guys being part-timers in WWE. I think Bobby Lashley is what you can call a part-timer in TNA. That's what I call him, a part-timer. You've only seen him a few times in TNA, but not, you know, all the time. That's why I call Bobby Lashley TNA's closest thing to a part-timer. And Bobby looked okay in this matchup as he was trying to finally end the EC3 undefeated streak. And it looked like he was close to doing that. Diving him some big moves, some big clothesline moves. And even setting EC3 out of the situation. But as EC3 was being his ass whipped, and looking like his undefeated streak was going to come to an end, he slipped out of the ring, only to be attacked by Jeff Hall. I mean... Well, now, Jeff Hardy's a little to ego. Calls in his qualification, and unfortunately, EC3's undefeated streak rolls on because he got the victory over Mr. Lashley as part of the disqualification. But Hardy slash Willow, of course, he is more dangerous as Willow Alter Ego is more dangerous than Hardy is. He has no control over this Alter Ego, and boy, did he lose control again tonight. He's just Way of DC3 attacking him, causing that, like I said, the DQ in the match against him and Lashley. Hitting him with a steel chair and putting his leg to the steel chair. It looked like he was going to do the exact same thing he did to Rockstar Spud last week. Put a chair connected to his leg and go up the top rope, actually, top of a ladder and splash on top of him. But EC3 swept out before Hardy 
slash Willow would do so. I think Hardy's on a war against anyone that was associated with Team Dixie. All the Dixieland cronies. Because he took out EC3's other friend, Rockstar Spud. Now EC3 was going to be now. So apparently Hardy slash Willow is avenging for his alter ego. Hardy taking out all the people that screwed him. Especially, I like this promo that he did with MVP. I said, like I mentioned, MVP tried to get people to take Eric Young's place before he became the one that took Eric's place to handcuff a bitch tonight in the match against Joe and Magnus. He even talked to Ma the Willow. And Willow, I like this creepy promos. You know, I think Willow's bringing out a new side of Jeff Hardy. I think this Willow thing's a cool idea. You know, I wasn't really hooked on it first, but seeing him tonight and seeing his promo against MVP backstage area, don't want to deal with the politics. He sounds like Bray Wyatt almost. <laughs> He's like Bray Wyatt, but maybe more sadistic. But anyway, I think Willow's a good thing. Willow's a good situation for him. Deal. So anyway, over the next scenario, following that match, we have Gunner coming out, talking about his victory over James Storm in the last man standing match at Lockdown, which I heard was very good. And he brought out his dad. His dad was in the crowd. And I was like, you kind of know where this is going. TNA likes to whip off WWE. We're well, going to whip off another WWE tradition. Let other wrestlers beat up another wrestler's dad. That's what James Storm did. And Storm hasn't been a heel in a while. Since he turned on Wildcat Chris Harris back in 06. So Storm is a decent heel, and he was really getting a lot of heat out of this one when he came out. Interrupted, and I knew he was going to interrupt this little heartfelt moment between Garner and his father. And he's like, oh, what a moment. And it got really personal for a moment. I've been saying it for weeks as well. You can't tell what's real and what's not in DNA anymore. Because you'd say that people make fun of you, but when people speak, it's like, oh, it's just a show. You may think it's getting more personal, especially what James Storm said about, I know... That Magnus, uh, Gunner's dad's dad, you know, um, Gunner's grandfather is looking down from heaven and saying that he is glad he's dead. Because he doesn't want to, because he was happy that he never got to live to see his son and grandson become disappointments. You can't tell if it's, you know what I mean? Like, shit like that these days is like, you, like, you know, it's like, oh, it's all storyline, but it's like, it just seems too real. See, it's getting way too real. You know what you're saying? Making fun of families like that? Like, really taking over the line. But that's what Storm does. You know? And after that, Garner just beat the crap out of Storm before Storm would nail him with a super kick and cover him against the ropes. And like I said, WWE likes to beat up, likes to have wrestlers beat up people's dad like Randy Orton beat up Cena's dad. Well, TNA likes whipping WWE off like they did. Like I said, TNA let James Storm beat the crap out of Garner's father and Garner was handcuffed Nailed him upside the head with a beer bottle. Setting up a match between Gunner and James Storm for next week's impact. Called Unchained. So you know Gunner's going to be out for revenge in this fight. But let me say this. Even though I just said all this. Like you know, you can't tell what's real and what's not. I think uh, Storm like I said. He was a great hero back then. And I'm saying. I'm glad he's here again. You know it's been a while since he's been a hero. And he's, and he's really getting a lot of heat. And he, he knows how to get the people pissed off. He knows how to get the amount of heat he needs to be a heel. And boy, did he deliver the heat tonight. So, there you go. Now, speaking of, of course, uh, Garner and Storm were tag team partners. And they broke up. Speaking of tag teams, or in this case, alliances breaking up. We have a match involving Gail Kim and Lady Tapper. We saw their relationship wake up last week following Tapper kind of interfering in Gail's match against Madison Rain last week at lockdown and with a miscue helped a young rookie named Brittany get a surprise victory over Gail. Only to build up this feud which would lead up to this matchup with this little stipulation if Tapper were to lose, she's out of TNA. With that stipulation up for grabs for Tapper, Tapper Using her big strength and, of course, her height, her height advantage as well. She just pummeled on Gail Kim. She just destroyed her. I've always been a fan of Tappas ever since she debuted. Even though that a lot of people said that she should have never won that gut check, that Evelise should have won the gut check, I've always said that Tappa had more dominance and more of a character development than uh, 
at least it just because of a just mere monster strength, which he really used in terms of face. It's all okay. She's she's an okay baby face. We'll see what would have happened if she would have went further as Gail Kim, despite being overmatched and outmatched by Cap Tepa strength, went for the one thing to keep her up. Her knee. She really focused the knee. No, she didn't do the finger four on the wing post. That would have been a good situation to try to weaken the knee more. But she didn't focus on that knee. And despite the punishment from that knee attack from Gale, of course, Tampa would come flying back with her big, tall moves. And as Tampa was ready to get the wing, she later eat the feet. As Gale would near her finishing move for the 1 2 3 victory. And by the stipulation, Tampa was written out of TNA. I don't know if it's storyline wise or Tampa's contract was really up because Tampa was on gut check. So who knows where this goes from here, but Gail Kim's trying to get her way back to the TNA Knockouts title. So, uh, there you go. Of course, as we all know, the Knockouts Championship is currently held by Madison Reed, a full member of a group named The Beautiful People. Now, of course, we saw one of the members who hasn't been seen in TNA in a while came back last week, Angelina Love. It offered... Madison Wayne's other former Beautiful People member, Velvet Sky, a chance to reunite the group, put the girl group back together, as Angie said last week. Madison's friend Velvet said she needed some time, she needed some space to kind of think about it because she's been through a lot in the last few months. With Saban and all this stuff, the other female, we haven't seen them in a few weeks. Maybe that feud's over with. Especially with what happened with the beautiful people tonight, as Velvet would be asked by Angelina to give Angelina her answer about whether or not Velvet is keen on reuniting the beautiful people or not. Velvet's like, there's been a lot of shit between us. Good times, and bad times, and I made it on my own. But despite all that, let's get the girls back together. Let's... You, you, gotta cut, you gotta lower it. Max is going crazy. Sorry about that little interruption here. So where was I before I was rudely interrupted? There about that mystery bus from the peanut gallery. Um, oh yeah. Velvet later answered to Angelina, yes. I would love to get back together with you and bring the beautiful people back together. So, they needed one more person. I got out of those, I was thinking they were getting this reunion going on. I was like, are they going to bring Madison to this? Well, Madison got ass to the ring. But it looked like beautiful people are going to be what they were in the beginning. A heel group. Especially the way that Angelina's like, We want you to be part of this group. It's all about Angelina Love, Velvet Sky, and Madison Rain. Like, the way she said Madison Rain, like, she said it really fast. Saying that Madison's beneath them again. Even Madison said... That you treat me like shit that you I was doing all your dirty work. That's what Velvet said about Angelina. She decided to reunite with her. And, and uh, Madison's like, Velvet, you want to get back with Angie? Get the beautiful people back together? That's fine with me. But I don't want to be a part of it. So then they have a backstage segment involving Madison and Angelina later. And then Angelina snapped and just beat the crap out of uh, Madison. Sealing the deal that the beautiful people are going to be a heel group again. That will be cleansing the world one ugly person at a time. Was that their old slogan? You know, beautiful people will dominate group. You know, whether it's two people or three people. But not when Lacey Von Eric was in the group. <laughs> That's when it all went down, when Lacey Von Eric came in. But the whole thing about them putting the ugly bags on people before Cody Rhodes did it to people. When Cody Rhodes wore his mask and put ugly mask. Uh, paper bags on people. Beautiful people were doing it to the knockouts when they were heel too. So now apparently Vel Velvet and Angie are now heels again. And we'll see what happens when the beautiful people take over team again. Now on our next scenario. A tag team match, of course, the triple threat match involving the tag team champions. The Bromans with DJ Z. There's Lorda now. DJ Z, my iron, just DJ Z now. They would defend the titles against the American Wolves, of course, Eddie and Davey, and Tigre Uno, and Sonata. They had a little segment involving Sonata and Tigre Uno, because the Bowman's are like, we want to get done quick. We want to get to the club tonight. Comprende? 
you know, they're trying to speak down to them because they don't know English. You know, I'm, I think poor man's characters have been okay. You know, they're they're kind of douchey, but they're good at playing the douchebags. And I've hated Robbie E for the longest time. But I didn't. But I hated Joy Ryan more. You know, I'm glad Joy Ryan's gone. But I can tolerate with Robbie E. Anyway, as a Robbie E and uh, Jesse was trying to get the match shorted up, they got attacked by Tigre Uno and Sonata before the Wolves came in. And basically, it was 4 and 2 for the most part, for the early part of his matchup, as both challenges were taking down the champs. But I knew this was going to happen. Once the good guy teams took care of the heel team, the good guy teams were going to collide. As yes, American Wolves and Sonata and Tigre Uno were getting on. And I love both these guys. I, I was very impressed with the debut of Sonata and Tigre Uno last week. I've always been impressed with the Wolves. I think both guys are destined to at least get one tag team title reign in their possession, especially with Sonata and Tigre Uno. The great performance last week. But I love the Wolves as well. I've been applauding the Wolves ever since they came in the team. And, and both teams were just beating on each other. And both were trying to stay afloat and trying to keep the titles because they knew that the first pedal submission they would lose. They didn't have to get pinned to lose the titles here. So I'm trying every opportunity to save their titles. Even having Zima Iron and okay, DJ Z get involved trying to take a little selfie and trying to distract Sonata, but then Sonata would be flying high taking out Zima. And there was a cool couple of cool spots in this matchup with the uh, Tigre and Sonata doing some good double flying moves, but the, there was a great double team move from the Wolves doing like a Big spine buster slash backbreaker move, like a double team move on uh, Tigre Uno. That was a great move, great double team move, taking him out. And as they were going for a double splash from each corner of the turnbuckle, the Romans took him down. They pushed him off. And with Zima taking care of Sonata, Romans picked up the scraps that the Wolves did to Tigre Uno, did their double team move, and one, two, three, victory for the Romans, escaping by the skin of their teeth. With the TNA Tag Team Championships. But, but that's what makes a heel team a great team. A team that you just want to see them get the ass beat. But by the skin of their teeth, they always seem to win. That's what makes a good heel tag team. That's what Bowman's, I think Bowman's have gotten better. You know, better good character development and okay, better wrestlers. Especially Robert E. So there you go. Bowman's, by the skin of their teeth, we tend to tag titles. But I say one day, Sonata and Tigre Uno, of course, Sonata is the exhibition champion. But I think those guys and the Wolves will get a tag team title reign. I know the Wolves just had a title reign, but it was not really a reign. It was like a little side reign, but I think they should get a real full reign at the champion, as champions someday. Both guys deserve a reign as champs. Speaking of title reigns, before we get to our main event tonight, we have a little situation, a little scenario, a couple vignette scene for... Kenny King again, the King of the Night, and Nux, former member of Ace and Ace, being uh, brought back into the fold in TNA. With this whole situation with his father, but the carnival company was kind of weird. Speaking of Ace and Ace, we would see the leader, the former leader of Ace and Ace, Bully Ray, be sentenced. I read this on the internet today, but on TNA's website, saying that Bully Ray was summoned to Dixie Carter's office for a meeting with Dixie. And he had a lot to say to her, because he was held up in her office for a long time. I mean, her chair was supposed like, you know, like this. Basically, she was, he was talking to the back of a chair, saying that you are a conniving little bitch, basically, that I never liked you ever since I walked into this company. You're no good, nobody in my business. And as he turned the chair around, there was nobody there. No Dixie. Instead, he was set up by Bobby Wood attacking him from behind, still not happy with Bully for screwing him out of owning 10% of Tina after Bully kind of screwed Team Wood at lockdown, leave the lockdown. And he just destroyed Bully Ray in his, in his office, that he was the one that sent Bully Ray to the office, kneeling him with the sacrifice poster and taking him out, setting up a possible match against them, ironically, going to be probably at sacrifice. But now on to our last matchup, for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Samoa Joe and Magnus taking on each other with MVP being handcuffed to Abyss. Now, I was like, everybody knew that even though the handcuff, you know, this would be still some sort of screwing ending, some still, some interference. 
despite this whole handcuff trying to prevent interference, it's going to hinder the interference more, which unfortunately we saw happen in this main event matchup. But of course, Madness starting off with a big aggressive stop, trying to beat the crap out of Joe early, his okay little main event matchup. But Joe, gunning on revenge, trying to get his title back after getting screwed out of it at lockdown, he had the aggressive side. But of course, Magnus knew that Joe had a weakness. His bandage ribs still bandaged up after the attack from Abyss at lockdown with Janice, storyline wise. So Joe's webs were the target as Magnus was ramming Joe's webs against the wing post and just weakening those webs as Joe's webs, like I said, are still not healed yet. But indeed, despite being hammered, punished to the webs by Mr. Magnus, the old vicious Joe came flying out as, of course, the fans fed on Joe with that famous chant that I love so much. Joe's gonna kill you. Joe's gonna... It looked like it. He, he was trying to go for the Monster Buster. He, I don't think he never did. But he did get the Akita Clutch on Mr. Magnus trying to get it on and just bumming him with his big flying kicks and knees. It was a decent little main event, but of course, the screw ending would indeed happen as Joe would take out the referee inadvertently with a big cheap shot. And then MVP would get attacked by Abyss while handcuffed, and of course, Abyss took off his handcuffs. He was trying to use tax. We saw him tease tax backstage to try to use the tax on either MVP and or Samoa Joe. But as Abyss was taking out those tax, MVP threw that bag away, preventing MVP. He preventing Abyss from using those front tags. But, unfortunately, MVP's plan would backfire to try to take Abyss's tough tags away as MVP would be taken out by Abyss with a clothesline. And as Joel's way to take out Abyss with a flying splash from the middle rope, MVP still down. Abyss nailed Joe with a chair as Joe was flying at him, threw the chair at his face, knocked him out. Magnus took advantage of that. With a elbow move from the top rope and a one, two, three victory. Referee getting back up to count the fall for Magnus getting the victory and by the skin of his teeth retaining his teenage title. Title. I said about the Bowman man Julian, what makes a great heel tag team or great heel villain? Single wrestler. You just hate him so much, you just want him to get their asses beat. You just want him to see him get destroyed. But you know about the skin of the teeth, they're gonna find a way to retain the titles. Which is what Magnus did tonight. Another screwy ending with the Abyss, this little handcuff situation, we all knew that was going to be a flunky situation. I think Joe knew it too. That everything MVP touches turns to shit. Despite MVP's good intentions to try to keep Abyss out of harm's way by handcuffing him, that plan would backfire as Abyss still became a factor in the helping Magnus retain the title with a chair nailing at Joe to help Magnus retain the title. I think Magnus could defend the title against Joe again at Sacrifice. So probably some seeds planted for sacrifice. Joe and, Joe and Magnus. Bobby Bobby Root against Bully Ray. But we all know the world of sacrifice goes through impacts. And next week's impact, we got, like I said, Gunner and Storm next week. So we'll see what happens there. As so we head down the next pay-per-view, sacrifice. That is it. For my TNA Impact Wrestling uh, review for this Thursday evening. Thank you all very much for watching. With that in mind, you've all been attacked. By the review from Zach. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a great weekend, everybody. See ya. Yeah.